Hello, my name is Dr. George Machaki, and welcome to uh, the series, my updated series uh, in understanding uh, the business or what uh, you would, a lot of people would look if you're taking me at a community college introduction to business organizations. Now, uh, this is an updated version, so it basically combines two uh, uh, previous uh, 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 lectures I had online. So this is a newer one. If you notice it, it'll, it'll have 2016 on there, just for my own information. The other lectures are still good. Things haven't uh, changed uh, uh, conceptual with the, with the concepts and everything else, but some of the data and some of the current events uh, have been updated with this uh, new version. Okay, so uh, like I said, if you're... Um, uh, just stumbled on me. If you're taking my course, this is a required uh, 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 viewing. Uh, it's a supplement to what you did with the book. It's a supplement to the integrated software that we've been using in class. And it's, an, uh, uh, it's a, uh, a supplement to our lectures within the class that we discuss. I do hand out the concept maps. You have them, you, you, know, you only have the first and second tier. Here I'll go to all the tiers. You could add on the more senses you utilize in uh, uh, writing the material down, speaking up, uh, listening to me, or you know, uh, audio, or even doing it yourself, uh, uh, kinesthetic, uh, you have a higher probability of retaining information. This whole series is uh, kind of like a smorgasbord, so you understand all the different parts, very little, at a larger level, how all business have to interact and different functionality and disciplines and different uh, uh, resources and different uh, environmental factors affecting from small, large businesses. So when you're ready to open up your business or you're managing a business, if you're only beginning starting on this, or you're uh, uh, assisting or consulting someone in a business, or you're a partner, or even a work at a business, or even if you're not doing anything with business, you're interacting with businesses, you can understand uh, what they're doing and why they're doing. And this also helps you either uh, as a leader or a manager or as a consumer to make sure that uh, you're uh, working with businesses that are reputable, uh, businesses that have a plan, especially if you're going to be investing, because remember, businesses uh, hire employees, and as you're going to learn in this chapter here in economics, uh, when you look at the invisible hand with Adam Smith, it uh, also uh, helps stimulate the economy and the productivity uh, so businesses can survive, and so we have our uh, a standard of quality, a quality of life and standard of living to what we're accustomed to. Okay, all right. So let's go and uh, now this is an updated version. So remember, you have the concept maps, you have the book, and you have everything else. So uh, I'm going to try to keep it under an hour. This is a supplement, a quick overview. So I'm going to make this just a little bit bigger. Some of you are asking me what system uh, program I'm using uh, to create these uh, conceptual maps. It's called MindJet. It's uh, utilized a lot in business and integrates well with uh, Microsoft Office um, on there. I'm not selling one way or the other on that. Just a, a uh, program I, uh, I utilize for conceptual maps. It, it could give you a lot of ideas in uh, one or two pages those are, uh, in class. Those of you are taking me at a community college and you're using, uh, you have the concept maps, you have the second tier, and now I'll have all the other tiers. My whole intent is that you write it, uh, you'll read it, add to it, and uh, when you're studying it, it's easier because you can see the whole picture and then there's, uh, and, uh, 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 fine detail for that, you know, micro and macro uh, economics that you'll be talking about a little bit here. Okay, so let me just make this a little bit bigger. Let's just zoom, and I'm going to go on here. I'll go at 200. So follow along. If not, you could write these concept maps. They're real easy. There's other programs out there that are free. And remember, if you learn in business, anything that's free is what you get. It's just free. So uh, you may not have all the whistles and bells uh, as this program or other programs have. And don't forget your community colleges. You know, this is a nice overview. And if you're not taking me for a class or for another instructor, but community colleges, you get the best uh, 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 return on your investment. Uh, you have professors of myself that have hired, uh, uh, you know, uh, what they call a terminal degree, or, uh, you know, we're, we've got our PhDs, our doctors, or our masters, everything else. We're experts in our field. We not only have the academic uh, background, we also have uh, uh, a real-life experience uh, background. So we, uh, you, get the, you get the best value, and most of these classes are transferable to a four-year university. But you need to get the whole immersion, the whole thing, me lecturing, interaction with the students, the book, the, uh, the software, and everything else. So look me up online. You know, um, 
and, and you'll be able to get the information. Okay, Concept, uh, concepts of business, real general, real quickly. What's business? Come on, general. I don't have to go through all of them, but I'll open them up. You'll provide goods and services. And it could, goods and services could be tangible or it could be intangible. Intangible service, I get a haircut. And, uh, you know, the, 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 uh, the quality of the service is as good as I had the last service. And I might have been with this person for all, a long time, and the next time I go in there and you got another person, and he or she cuts my hair, and I don't, get, I don't feel I get the same quality. So now that's what I judge. So remember, when you're doing services, it's the last experience they had in your shop. When you're doing with tangible goods, it's how well or how long longevity of that sh uh, uh, good uh, uh, lasts. So you have something, and those are their bases, like it or not. The barter business, I'm not a nonprofit organization, though I am social responsible, is for profits. And remember, and how do I get profits? Uh, revenues. Just my sales coming in, uh, minus my expenses. If I paid everybody, what do I have left? Even myself, what do I have left? That's my uh, profit, that's my uh, return on my investment. Okay, now consumers have a choice. Uh, you know, the, the capitalistic, uh, uh, I don't think, uh, uh, capitalistic uh, system like the United States, consumer have a freedom of choice, what business, where I shop, where I spend my money, where I work, you know, as long as it's within the framework and within the legal structure, both business uh, law and uh, 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 the, the law of the, of the country, for lack of better words, okay? Business must take into account consumer demand. How much do they want? You know, I can I can saturate it. Then my prices go down. If you, you, know, if you think what's going on with your oil, look how cheap oil is. $2, oh my God, people thought it's going to be like $6. What happens? There's more supply uh, than there's demand. You know, the, all these people, the economy, and we'll get into that. We discussed that in class. Okay, now, opportunities for an, 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 an enterprise. Un, you know, for me to be successful as a business, I have to find a market where there is a, a need for my product. And not only did I have a great idea or a good idea, or even it's an idea that's been out there, I'm opening another hot dog stand, whatever the idea is. When I'm opening up that place, I have to look at a market that's not saturated with other hot dog stands. What do I have? How can I meet this need? And now somebody else is going to invest in me, yes, but not only that I have the idea or the con a concept, they're looking at could I be sustainable for the next three or five years. Remember, business is looking at current. I got the idea. Could I make money for the next five or year? Or if it's only a one-time deal, then I'm not opening up a business. I'm selling like a, 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 something that's a fad, a certain a color or something else. I know it's only a one-time deal. I make as much as I can, and I'm looking for the new innovation. So I'm not there for the long term. Okay? Now, benefits for a business. Remember, that's opportunities uh, and, and for, for the enterprise. Uh, and it's not supposed to be enterprise. It's supposed to be uh, entrepreneur. Jeez. Okay? All right, let me just stop this real quickly. I mean, I'm going to make the corrections while I'm on here. There we go. I just want to make sure. Remember, I'm doing this live, and I'm, I'm, uh, this is the way uh, with the conceptual maps is how I uh, uh, understand the subject matter to be able to present it from the uh, materials that we're utilizing at the college uh, that I'm teaching at. So it gives you a good line in the sand. Okay, so it's opportunities for entrepreneurs. Okay? Uh, unmet customer needs. Now, benefits for business. I help people working. I produce goods and services consumed. I create new innovations. I contribute to the quality of life. We're going to talk about quality of life and look at economic, uh, um, what do you call it, indicators. Political freedom. I got political freedom. I can, as long as it's nothing against a, uh, a derogatory, discriminatory, or anti uh, 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 against a certain group or anything like that. Remember, I'm a business. I still have to work with the uh, uh, the rules and the laws of the land. Okay, uh, uh, it, my product is uh, safe and or it helps uh, in creating leisure for something. That's what a lot of apps do. Remember, the smartphone is supposed to give me more time to to myself. And what happens? I got the free time. Most Americans, I don't know what to do with free time, so I do more work. So now I'm more stressed out. So I need an app that actually puts me to sleep. Okay. I'm just uh, just adding that on, and that could be, and it could be a business. You know, uh, you see uh, yoga uh, places coming up. You see meditation things, and those are needs for businesses. And they're you know, they're very specific. What you find out with businesses is very specific to the location. 
Okay, now, external uh, environment. I'm going along with this program. Now, if I'm looking at the external environment, we have domestic environment, we have global environment, we have technological environment, that political and legal environment, that social culture, I have economic environment. I have the slide here that was presented. So if I'm looking at all this, when I'm looking at not only the environment of where I'm open up, if I'm a local business, what's the environment of, let's say, where I'm at in Palatine or if I'm in Grays Lake, those are the two schools that I teach community college, uh, colleges at, you can look them up. Uh, and if I look at there in that environment, what's the political environment there? Chicago, just a little unrest. Uh, some of the suburbs are better political environment than other. Now that's just a political environment in, this, uh, in a micro uh, uh, viewpoint. What's the political environment in the state? If you know the state of Illinois, you know we haven't had a budget. You know uh, we got the highest tax rate. Yeah, I'm not saying nothing. Oh, he's against the state. I'm saying nothing that's not out there that I could find out. I'm going to open up a business. Do I open up here? Am I in Cook County or from Lake County? Lake County, the tax is a little bit cheaper. Maybe I'm one percent, but it's still high. But you know, uh, Cook County, ten percent, one percent. If it's on a large business sales, I'm selling a car. That amount could make the sale or not. If I got little small things, I could probably get away. If I'm right at the border, it makes a big difference. The economy. What's the political environment? Where am I at? All this is uh, uh, something that makes me as a business where I open up. I have to think about this thing. Then I'm looking at uh, the, the global environment. Are the global companies here? Where do I get my supplies? Where do I get my uh, my goods? Can I sell overseas? You know, I have Mexico. I have uh, Canada. I have the European Union. You know, we've got uh, trade packages. We have, uh, you know, the, right now the political, we don't have anything with the Asia. You know, uh, 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 the, the tip that uh, you know, uh, uh, in trans uh, uh, American or uh, 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 what do you call it, trade pact that's a big debate right now in business. I'm trying, not trying to just take one side or the other. Remember, I'm a business. I just want to say who's going to buy my product, where I'm going to buy my product, but I want to be at a, a fair advantage. I want to make sure that I can sustain my employees here in the U.S. I'm a business owner, come on. But if I can get goods overseas, just like my customers, if I buy something, do I buy U.S. product or do I have a made in China or a made in Japan or made in Africa or made someplace in the Middle East, made in Israel or made in uh, Saudi Arabia? Who cares? I'm a business person. Do I have the cost and it, does it... Uh, uh, work with the the rules and regulations that I have to work with. Later on, we're going to go into global. Uh, you know, are there any tariffs or any kind of sanctions? Could I work with that uh, uh, country? All these are factors that I have to look at the politics. And if I'm selling overseas, how long is the government going to be there? Are they friendly to U.S. business? Are they friend Are the people friendly to the U.S. Uh, things uh, or, or not? All those are considerations or factors. Then I'm looking at technology. And do I have the current? Do I have an app? Small business, you got to have an app. Everyone's got an app, eh? George's hot dog saying, where's my app? You don't have an app? Oh, you're a small business. Apps basically gives me another way of communicating with my customers. So technology is a force that, you know, I have to have a website. I have to be on LinkedIn. I have to be on, I have a Facebook. I have to have a Twitter account, Instagram account. How do I all do this? You know, larger companies could afford that, but they're always adjusting. Who's my customer? Who am I selling? Does the customers that I'm selling to, do they utilize those apps? If they do, I have to have the technology because that gives me my, uh, uh, my, uh, uh, for lack of better words, gives me my uh, uh, a fair playing field. Look, online, they don't know I'm a small business working out of my garage or out of my house. Would you know? How would you know? Who cares? Geez, you got the product. But they're looking at the uh, reviews. And you know, and even with the reviews, technologies, I got to have the reviews. Is someone faking the reviews and making them look good? And all that. No, these are honest. These are certified reviews. And all this technology, I as a small business, because my consumers are using it, I have to be aware of it. And where do I find it that's cost effective for me, that doesn't drag my business down, but it is a value to my customers? It's not a value to my customers. I don't really care about the app. You know, talking about my business. A larger companies, they have to look at what is my com competition doing. So I have to know that. You know, what's the social culture and the environment? I they are more uh, green. Everyone's green, so they're using more less paper. Do you want more apps? Do you want more technology? I don't need anything else. You know, so you see the newspaper, you see the printing, you see the publisher. They're going more with the e-books because that's what students want. You got the smart books. I don't need all this. I don't have to have these big suitcases. Or everything else, I could just do it on here. I find my information different way, but it's not for everyone. Some people want a different market. You have your baby boomers, you have your, uh, the new generation going up, they're gonna know all technology. What's the paper? 
I have to adjust, I have to be. All these forces are all business are looking at for external environment. Domestic, what are my businesses are doing? What are my competition? And if I look at all this, here's like, oh, I did promise you to look at it. So I'm gonna open it up, look at it. I'm not gonna go through it, I just talked about everything else. But I know students, you could stop this uh, uh, recording and you could read it. Mine is a, a summarization, what you should read and everything else. Now look, I put more words in my concept map. I would get rid of half the words, the commas, but right now I'm doing this as a uh, teaching mode. So this is something that you could just cut out this and study. Forget the is and does, you know, because if I'd be doing this, it, 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 I would go like this. Remember, I'm just giving you remember, value added. Relationship between business and you could just do a slash and you would know like this you know it's not business government unless you're communist or socialist that uh, governments are involved uh, right and as part of the uh, economic systems you're looking at the different systems i throw this in because i'm not going to cover it okay so we have everything out now let's take a talk about uh, economic systems okay you have different things definition of economic systems again uh, uh, it's the resource of a nation what I produce, remember, I'm part of the United States. I'm part of the economic system of Illinois. I'm part of the economic system of Lake County and Cook County. I teach in both uh, uh, counties. I shop in both counties, okay? I once in a while do some consulting in both counties. So when I'm looking at those economic systems, I have to understand them from a micro to a macro. In that, you know, because uh, parts of Illinois are doing well, parts of Illinois are not doing well. Some parts of the states are doing well. You know, uh, Illinois has a state that's doing well. Is it how well is it doing compared to some states? There's some flooding. Some Louisiana has real terrible floods. California used to be a state everyone's going. You got fires. You got mudslides. I, I mean, it just things happen. If I have my resources there, do I find another supplier or do I find another market you know they're, they're trying to or that's the market i'm going i'm selling home supply Jeez, you got to rebuild i'm looking I, look i'm not trying to look at the at the uh, don't look at me at um, the disaster part i'll give them discount but i'm looking at the market just people's going to buy insurance companies the government needs stuff i'm looking man i could sell to them if i have the product they need if i can market if i could go into their vendors line that's what i have to think as a small business i have to look at this, this you know you, you know uh, uh, it's a disaster for somebody else, but for somebody else, it's an opportunity. When you look at strengths and weaknesses, you know, something's happening because of supply that need there. No one could be short term, but then they may come back to me. Hey, help me out when they're doing You have a lot of these large companies that are giving away free water and everything else. So, uh, uh, why? Because they say, hey, when they are though, they say, hey, Home Depot helped me, Menards helped me rebuild, they gave me a uh, Red Cross, or whatever. Do you see what I mean? So this is all part of the business cycle, helping each other, being socially responsible, but also from a business perspective, will they come back to me? I'm a I'm teaching a business class. I'm not a non-profit. A non-profit wants you to think of them and come back. You have to use these principles, okay? So now, factors of production. You're looking at labor, right? You're looking at labor. You know, it includes everything in labor, you know, how educated they are. You know, you got a lot of, not people, because a lot of people have have a good labor force but they don't have the education they don't have the skill sets that i'm looking for everything's technology now the production is coming back to the united states what is it we're going from service you can't always service everybody you got to have produce something it's back to the united states but it's at a higher level machinery is utilized so i need somebody who could read those somewhat boring manuals I need someone who understands, looks at charts, knows some technology, how to do some reprogram, not upset, not nervous, knows how to do something because that's part of technology. You have cars now that are going to be running without uh, a, a driver. Come on, pretty soon, just, you know, it's, it's like in the future. It is the future very quickly okay capital investments how much money i need entrepreneurs coming up with new ideas and you don't have to start a new business i'm going to a new market i'm coming up with something existing new improve i'm an entrepreneur physical resources you, you, you know i mean are something tangible you know food uh, i mean office supplies everything else information number one you gotta have information how do customers find out they need something information look i did you know if you look at information it's out there your site has to have some information here's our pricing here's something about it here's a picture of the owners here's a picture of the store layout here's our hours here's what we do whatever they're gonna google it have an app instead of writing out you know if you have a longer thing just give them an app with the qr reading boom has everything on there but when they sign off on that what do they give you they give you uh for lack of better words they give you information their emails so i could uh go back and you know economically i i give them some an app for free give them some something they see value but they give me the emails and i could uh, subtly sell things to them i'm a business 
Okay, planned economy. There's two types of economy. You have a planned economy, and it's basically a centralized government controls everything. And and here and here's a slide figure. If I look at labor, capital, entrepreneurs, and information. Okay, you know, for those that are visual, and, and, and to make most of production, those that you're looking at mostly communist China. Yeah, and if you're what you're gonna find out from the, the planned economies and the market economies is that there's no pure planned economy except maybe uh, I think North Korea. It used to be Cuba. Cuba is even uh, opened up more to a uh, market economy because the government can't sustain everything else same thing with russia and you know even though they have some more controls or even china very communistic but now they're a mixed economy so what you find out from your reading is that we're going towards more mixed there's no pure we're going more socialism if you look at the uh, affordable care act versus uh you know social security versus some countries that we're gonna, i'm gonna go real quickly you know so i'm just this is timing now uh when i'm looking at socialist uh countries uh, if i'm looking like france everything else there's nothing free you got free education, the tax rates are higher. We're around 33%. There may be about like 35, I mean, uh, 40 or 50 or 60 or even everything else. But there, it's a mixture, okay? Okay, uh, so I got communism. You got it in here in most countries. You know, okay, socialism. The thing you want to think about brain drain, you know, you get free everything. Remember, there's nothing free. Uh, you're paying it in a higher taxes. But what happens? So they get all this education. They, uh, they meet the requirements. And then what they basically do, they just leave. Once, you know, because I could. I've got my doctors uh, or everything else. But I stay here. They're taxing me 65%. I go to the U.S., they're taxing me 33%. A little more, for, you know, even though my, if I'm a doctor, it's my uh, malpractice is higher. But I still, could retain more of the profits, the marriage, uh, the money. I could select my customers. I could, you know, if I'm not discriminatory or uh, 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 in following the laws of the land, I have a more flexible uh, subject. I could control myself. I could, you know, if I could handle it well, I could keep more of a profit margin return on my investment. That's all that. So they're leaving. I mean, when you tax the rich too high, I'm not saying that they're not taxed enough. Trust me, I'm trying to get out of my school. I'm trying to pay off my student loans myself, so I understand that. But you know, you're in a certain bracket, the middle class. Are, are we dwindling in the middle class and becoming just one class? The, the very wealthy, or, and the, I just show that, and I'm a business person. I really, uh, you know, both ways. You have to look at it and, and see which way you're you're at. So you know, so you're looking at a Democrat or Republican in business. Remember, you never take a pol political sign. You just go, oh, there's an election going on. You want customers for all. I don't care about race, color, creed, uh, uh, sexual orientation, or no orientation, or religion background, as long as you have a MasterCard, Visa card, or cash, or Bitcoins nowadays, okay? So you have your benefits, I just put that in there. Uh, you know, uh, uh, what's the market economy? We're, uh, you would call a capitalistic economy. You know, what's the market? The market is, you know, exchange between buyers and sellers. Think of eBay, a lot of times, you know, you're either a customer or a business. Even if you sell on eBay, you take on the role of a business person. Those, I hate businesses, but I sell on eBay, or I have a garage sale, you're a business person. You're selling a product to somebody that's gonna buy as is or whatever, and you're coming up with a cost, and you know, they're gonna say, this is uh, overpriced or whatever, and you do some negotiation, you're a business person, business person, business person. Remember, business person, you're taking on the attributes of a business. Okay, but eBay is one way to look at it, you know, uh, 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 market capitalistic uh, allocation by creating a combination of supply and demand. I got something you want. Uh, benefits of free market, you know, allows for open competition among companies, provides opportunities for the poor people to get in. And I don't like to use the word poor because, you know, a lot of middle class, there are people that have a lot of stuff that they're still not well off because they owe too much, you know, they're stressed out. So I'm looking at social, different social economic uh, 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 status you are at. You develop, you start off as a, a, you know, I, I'm an immigrant, came from, a, you know, I'm a German, a non German citizen, I was born in Germany. Uh, you know, I mentioned that before. But I'm Polish, you know, uh, basically uh, I, I came here on a boat, uh, so, but I had the opportunity. So I'm a, at a lower social class, being able to move up to different social classes through education, through training, through opportunities, through things that are available by the government. Look, and the government gives you something, I'm not talking about welfare. You know, welfare is, is a short term to get you on your feet. But if they give you money for opening up a business or grants because you're a minority or a woman, you know, a lot of people look at it, I'm not going to take that because, oh, it's a handout. Hey, it's uh, what I call seed money to stimulate the economy by helping small businesses 
grow. And then when you grow, you hire people and you hire more. Trust me, the government attacks the heck out of you down the road, okay? When they pay for your student loans, and they're, no, not pay for your student, give you the loans for student loans, they expect a repayment if they open up. But the economy fell, and uh, a lot of people got stuck in the economy. There was, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on. Going forward, the student loan going on there they're watching what you're taking out what you're paying that you could pay that you understand that when i was taking out so long there was nothing just sign up here in the dial line go forward but you learn and the culture learns and the culture's changing the economy's changing so now you've got the new economy will be able to sustain itself do you understand that what do you do with the old economy you can't really burn it you know you have to help that economy my take on the economic thing is give them a break you know, cut it in half, do something. Cause basically, what's happening is adding on to the interest and interest that people owe. So it's just like you know when they do a break in uh, in uh, a bankruptcy or uh, or they have these uh, collection agencies that says we'll give you a break. They're not giving you a break on what you owe. They're giving you a break on what uh, uh, the interest rate. You know, you know, I mean, they already got their money back uh, in most cases. But you know, help them out in this economy, and they could open up businesses. They could stimulate the economy, go forward. And if you're looking at the resource of the economy, we were resources now you're helping you have different restrictions you're helping students going on you're giving them free education get them out of that move the economy instead of just you know paying that they're not paying anyway re-stimulate them now they'll go forward okay that's just my thing hopefully somebody will listen to it because it's my take on how you can get the economy going forward new ones you already have them they have the rules to everything else the old ones take a hit in the economy but now these people don't have that debt they could buy the houses they could open up the business they could go forward okay and they want to uh, uh, down there if you make it well remember dr george Pachaki. all right it's still older government i'm still working okay and I throw that in because, you know, things happen. You know, I'm not, I'm not going one way. You know, uh, the country is great. It helps you everything else. You need that, but, uh, but you have to figure out, what am I doing? It's a resource. I'm a resource. You utilize the resources. Not only me, a lot of uh, individuals out there that are either veterans or people working as a resource. I'll give you my two cents. Say, hey, let's go forward. Okay, limitation of free market. Now, again, in the equity of wealth, you're going to begin to see that now. That's what the whole political thing, environmental damage, you know, I'm going to cut corners. And I'm not saying all businesses. Come on, a lot of small businesses, we really, we help the environment uh, probably more than some of the larger businesses. You know, government regulations, it's killing us. You know, uh, we want to help everyone else with uh, the Affordable Care Act, but I don't know what that's going to cost me. It goes up, back and forth. As a business, small business, I'm, I have such a small profit margin, I have to know the cost or guarantee me the cost of the government the next small if you're under so many employees you're making so much here your rates as a business will not go up for the next five years i can now hire people because i know i'm safe but you know, help me i'm working here i'm a small business owner also okay people's gonna just start getting on okay mixed economy you're gonna find out there's no free market and we talked about that even the only one left is uh, uh north korea uh for lack of better words uh, tends going to mixed economies, like, right, most economies are disappearing, not disappearing, come on, Russia is disappearing, China is disappearing, they, uh, they have their controls, but they understand, I don't care what culture you're at, what's in it for me, if I'm going to give everything back to the state, I want to help the resources of the state, uh, they're giving me my protection, my goods, and everything else, if you look at what's happening in the Middle East, if they don't have that government structure, it's up for chaos, but, uh, you know, you, you, you got some structure, uh, is fine, but I still want to keep some of the profit in there. If I give everything away, it's like I give everyone an a, a, a C. My A students, what the heck should I work for? My B students, what should I work for? You know what I mean? Uh, or my D students, hey, I'm going to get the same grade everyone. You have that, and if I have a higher grade or I have a higher potential, I work harder, I expect a little more return. So you're going to find some rules and regulations, but you still have some ability to uh, increase your own uh, personal wealth. And that's what you see China and a lot of the other countries uh, uh, going on. And if you look at Venezuela, what's going on there, you know, I'm just throwing that in because we're in a global, what's going on in there, you know, it worked out well, as on the oil economy going, they're feeding and everything else, but now they don't have it, you can't just, government doesn't have the money, you have to have people come innovative and come up with new ideas and able to support, and, and, uh, and the only way that's going to happen, they could be able to uh, retain some of it, not take advantage, remember? Not to keep all of it. There's a lot of the wealth all up there and they're keeping it, but they're not utilizing. Bring it back in there and then help people out. That's how they can be. So private, uh, the private vacation, remember, English is a second language for me, so 
Okay, process of converting government into enterprise. Russia went into that a little bit, and I'm not going to go into that, but you uh, read on some of the history of what they went through. Kind of, you know, China saw what happened. China's still going privatization, but they're basically uh, uh, um, uh, monitoring it. You know what I mean? You know, uh, Poland, National Airline was sold to a group of private investors. Uh, Netherlands uh, privatized uh, their postal group. We pri privatized ours, but still had the control. They're kind of making money, not making money. Uh, you know what I mean? Canada privatized traffic controllers. Uh, Iran privatized oil refining, but they still keep some of the assets. Remember, yeah, uh, even though Iran is doing some private. It's a mixed economy, it's still a controlled uh, economy through uh, their uh, religious culture. No different than if I look at socialist countries, they still have the government input versus in a completely dictatorship. It's not a dictatorship like North Korea would be. It still has, you know, or a monarchy, for lack of better words, some of the other Middle Eastern countries. But they still have, so they're still looking at it. They still have some input, and if they look at it's the national security how much oil they're pumping out or have and uh, that information won't be uh, available to the open public but most likely to the organization you're working with inside remember when you're working with the host country especially if you're doing any international you have to follow the rules of the host country like it or not okay Okay, demand and supply. Okay, now the demand is basically is willingness of uh, buyers. You go to uh, like the flea market. Uh, uh, you know, Schomburg has one in the uh, Allstate. Uh, they're going to try and sell one way. That's what they call uh, a building in there uh, on the weekends and, uh, or on in the suburbs you have it. Uh, or eBay would be kind of a, like a demand and supply, you negotiating. Right, and then the supply is I'm only uh, dependence on how much I paid. I want to make some profit on there. Do I uh, cut my profit margin uh, to make the sale so I can at least pay my bills, whatever you know? So that works. And when you look at uh, uh, the, the supply and demand, when you look at uh, the marketplaces where um, the two meet, okay. And here's the, the demand chart, remember. And when you look at the acre living room price, I'm willing to pay so much. Okay, boop, depends, it goes down. And, you know, real quick, we already discussed this in class. And as a supplier, I'm willing to uh, make so much as long as I make a, a profit margin. Look, I'm not, I, I, I got to at least break even, or, you know, not break even, there might be in business. Shoot, I work for somebody else. I want to at least make a profit margin I think is acceptable. Now, I can, some companies want a higher profit margin. I'm a small business, I want enough to pay my bills. I could go on vacation, do other things, pay my student loans off, or whatever. Okay? If you're up there, you know, Look me up. Uh, okay, so uh, okay, and where they meet is basically the the price we uh, agree on. Later on, we take the economics to talk about in the electricity, electricity of the price. You know, uh, certain goods are uh, more flexible. Other goods, whether you like it or not, they're not so flexible. I'm not going to go into that. That's in your uh, your economic class. Okay, private enterprise. For me to. Uh, uh, Want to open up a business to start allows individuals to pursue their own interests. That's part of it, you know. And I think it's something that, that Roosevelt came up, or, or John F. Kennedy. Uh, I forgot which one came up with uh, with the rules for um, uh, private enterprise. For me to open up, I got to be able to open uh, own my own uh, uh, own uh, private property, at least some uh, part of it, so I have some in input into it. Yeah, come on. That's how the capitalistic free market works. Uh, free uh, right to freedom of choice. What business, even though there's government controls, you know, even like socialist countries, they give you certain things. Uh, you may not be open up every business, but you have a uh, 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 choices, for lack of better words. But free, completely free market. I can open everything I want as long as it's not uh, harming or anything else or harming uh, the the state of the nation that you uh, you're at. Okay, profit assumes some risks as an entrepreneur. Lower profit leads some people to abandon security working with somebody else. I gotta be able to keep some of the money. I'm taking the risk, I wanna be able to uh, keep it a little higher return. Otherwise I work for somebody, why do I take the risk? And then competition it has to be, uh, 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 it's supposed to be the same resources. Uh, what it was, I'll leave it at that. The same resources for customers uh, occurs in two or two more business. I got to be able to have the same resources, the same availability to the market that I'm not closed in. Problem when we're going into some of the uh, overseas is that foreign markets are frowned upon, or foreign markets have so much red tape, it's harder for me to get in. When you look at the balance of trade, and you know, if I'm able to, to let your country, uh, for me to uh, uh, export your products into my country, you should be, uh, I should be allowed to import my products in your country with, with the same uh, uh, amount of uh, uh, ease or uh, complexity. I hate to use the word difficulties. 
Oops, okay, let me go out. It'll be more than an hour on this. Just a lot to cover in this chapters, okay? So let's go now where we're at. Now we're going to come in there. Perfect competition to exist. Two conditions must prevail. All firms in the industry must be small. And uh, two, the number of uh, uh, firms in the industry uh, must be large enough. You only got two industries. That's what, you, you know, when you're looking at uh, uh, when the government gets involved, you only got two in the individuals. What's the prices? They can't say it. You're going to raise your prices. We'll keep them the same. The more people you have, the more choices you have. Okay, you work in a small town. You only got one store, so you're going to take those high prices. You want to drive the other thing. It's going to cost me too much. If a competitor comes in there now, all of a sudden the prices start uh, uh, leveling out. So you've got two or three stores in there now. You have a better chance of you getting the best price. Okay, uh, slide listing, perfect competitions. You know products, and here's it for you. We already discussed that in class. Okay. Okay, degrees in competition, you got monopoly, you don't see too much, and I think the way they did this one, the way the, we're looking in the class, this one came first, I'm going to put it up in here. Okay, and then they go, monopoly is the worst, you don't see too many of those, uh, okay? Okay, so let's go on this way, so you're looking at mon monolithic, many sellers, perceived differences, and bakeries, fast food, Coke, Pepsi, you know, uh, soda drinks, we'll talk about that when we get to market, uh, few sellers, tobacco, auto, must say natural monopoly, and it's a new one, kind of nice to do uh, from the other authors, the industry in which one company can most effectively supply all the needs and goods of the organization, okay? And monopoly, you don't see too many one seller, diamonds, utilities, even utility companies used to work for uh, uh, ComEd in the Commonwealth Edison or Exxon Corporation. They're, they're combining because you have economies of scale, but you can also buy here the co-generations, you have natural gas, you have other uh, forms, or you have solar power, solar panels, you know, that uh, go in there. So you have, uh, in the lack of better words, you have an alternative, even if you look at uh, Illinois Bell or uh, uh, AT&T now. Now used to be on Bell, SBC, and now it's uh, AT and T. Now, what do you have? You have your mobile phones. You have different things. You have Comcast. You have, uh, and those are the, just the providers here. So it's not really a monopoly. You see less and less of a, 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 a monopoly out there. Okay, and then you have the chart that we have in here. Okay, and then here's the chart. I guess degree, and they kind of like you know I'll have that on here so you can look at it. They have the chart. You are right. Okay. Okay, so now we have economic indicators. What do you have? You have your stats, all of this statistical analysis. And if you, when we talk about the Federal Reserve, you'll find out from the uh, uh, Federal Reserve, for, you know, just uh, uh, 12 or 13 Federal Reserve uh, location, and each one will tell the economic uh, indicators. So you look at it, you know, you have different business cycles. I'm going quick. I'm going to try to be underneath an hour. Uh, pattern of short terms up and down. You know, business cycles go through cycles. Sometimes the business are going, when it goes down, that's when you clean out your inventory and you readdress, you become that entrepreneur spirit thinking, hmm, how do I change the market? Okay, I'm not selling this market. I'm down. I sold everything else. I'm at the bare bones. I'm breaking even. Let's start. And I'm waiting for the economy to pick up. So that's why people are looking. Right now, you don't see businesses doing much. We're going through an election. Is it going to be a Democrat or Republican? You know, and the way I look at it, Democrat or Republican, unless you have something that's really out of the box in both cases, what do you have? It's like a quarter. You have the heads and tails. It's just different sides of the same program and looking at a different viewpoint. Don't get mad at me. I'm a business person. and uh, you know, I'm just throwing that out. Uh, and, and remember, uh, uh, when you look at a business, what I want to do is to stimulate you to think. I'm just giving you a template. There's no right or wrong. Come on. I mean, there is. It just gives you an idea, something to look at. That's what this course is about understanding business we all know what the rules are the rules but what does it mean inside okay i look at both sides of the coin and see what happens so right now that i'm waiting is it going to be a democrat then it's going to be more for uh, uh, the social uh, agenda mine's going to be a uh, republican maybe a social agenda but it'd be geared more the flip side more towards businesses more business friendly so maybe the economy will grow i don't know which one's going but right now I'll wait. Why make any changes? See what rules are. If it's going to be the current one, the rules are there, so I know where to go. It's the new one. I got to figure out for the first six months, whatever they say, uh, in office to find out which direction the economy is going. Then I can make my uh, determinations and my planning long term, more than four years. It used to be 10 years. Okay? So we have that. Now we have the gross domestic. Uh, uh, 
uh, uh, product is a total value of goods and services, refers to goods and services produced within a given period by national economy to domestic f uh, factors of production measured to aggregate the output. And so we have that about 18 trillion, 17 trillion in the book, give or take, but those uh, couple of years were probably higher than that if I'm mistaken. What enables us to enjoy the standard of living? And from a company's perspective, the numbers go down, the economy's gross domestic product, even if they're foreign or if we're not buying, if we're not creating, remember companies through Adam Smith, that invisible hand, remember? Because I'm not selling products, I'm not buying products, that means I'm not making money, I'm not hiring, I'm laying off, it affects the economy in a whole. So a lot of in the multinational companies, for lack of better words, do not have a loyalty to one specific company. They have a loyalty to their stock order. I hate to be cold, but that's life. So if I'm looking at the loyalty to small businesses, they're where you're loyal. If you can increase the number of small businesses, not only in your local area, in your country, but go in, uh, globally by selling on eBay or selling international internet, uh, in e-commerce, you could improve the economic condition of the whole country, for lack of a better word. That's why you see a lot of governments are spending more money into the economic conditions of that organization or of the company of small businesses to bring them up. Okay, so I've got gross output, we got nominal, and then I basically got purchasing power. Now the purchasing power, you know, and I'm going to go through it. We talked about the principle that exchange rates are set so that price of a similar product, different companies are about the same. Remember, what's the dollar worth versus the peso? What's the dollar worth versus in a, uh, in a currency in another currency? And that's where the, uh, the, uh, the, the parity, the, uh, the purchasing power. Okay? Let me just go real quickly here. Okay, so now let, let's go with the slide. Okay, so let me show the slide, and I think they use with the, uh, uh, this wasn't the slide I wanted. Uh, oh, here it is, this is the slide. Okay, so let's just make this slide just a little bit bigger. Hang on, I'll make it bigger in here. I made it small for my program. So if you're looking for a dollar, where are we at? We're in the U.S., so it's gonna cost with a slight a difference, uh, uh, price of a Big Mac in U.S. currency, through 2000. So it's 470, uh, 400, jeez, oh my goodness, my, my heart. Uh, $4.70, if I was in Venezuela, it would probably be that high. Uh, uh, $4.79 in the U.S. In Canada, it's four, less than Canada, so it's a little less. Mexico is only $3.35. Hey, it's cheaper, it's equivalent. Now, if I look at Norway, Hungary, let's see, Britain, Egypt, $2.30, South Africa. So we're paying pretty much. Uh, New Zealand is about the same because I think New Zealand uh, is using uh, uh, U.S. dollars, if I'm mistaken. Russia, $1.36, Australia. So you see the cost. So if I'm looking at the same cost, equivalent cost is what's going to cost in that whole country. Okay? So that's where your parity comes in there. If you take me for finance... We'll get a little bit more in that. All right, so economic uh, indicator, a a aggregated output, uh, you have that. Got problems. The standard of living, we talked about total quality of goods and services uh, that can be produced with the currency of their, uh, in their economy. Okay, so we took care of that. Where am I at? That's domestic. Now, the national one is a quick overview, is within a given period, regardless with, you know, the domestic ones is just industries that are U.S. Uh, uh, manufacturers or services within the US, United States. There's a lot of foreign uh, uh, organizations or companies that work within the U.S., but the, so the gross national product is everybody uh, located, uh, given, regardless where the factors of productions are located, total value of goods and service produced by a national economy, okay? Now productivity, we talked about that, is basically, uh, here's the PowerPoint slide. Let's say it takes, uh, and, and let me go over with a quick overview. Uh, how much a system or economy or resource economy uh, produces with the resources needed to produce and measure economic growth. We're talking here about countries and locations producing. Now companies produce, when I'm looking at economics, what resources? I got three cars, I only have three engineers or three salespeople or three whatever, but they're only using each one a half a time. So I have, really, I don't need three. I could get by with two because they're only using 
their car half a time so I could get by with two and still have a half of car left so I could get rid of one car that saves me money. No maintenance, no insurance, nothing breaking, nothing happening, and I still have enough resources utilized. And you don't see businesses buying resources that just sit there. You know, you have like Dairy Queens. So you see them open during the summer and in the winter there's nothing there. That is a unless they write it off as a loss, but that's a uh, that's uh, a loss. That's a resource that's not being utilized uh, correctly. So let's say. So let's look at productivity. It takes one U.S. worker one U.S. dollar to make ten soccer balls in an eight-hour day. Let's say it takes one and a half Saudi workers, equivalent of one point five dollars in real, the, the the currency of Saudi uh, Arabia, to make ten soccer balls in an eight-hour day. We can say that the U.S. soccer ball industry is more productive than the uh, Saudi. The soccer ball industry. The two factors of production is, in this extremely simple case are labor and capital. Now, when you look at the exchange rate and everything else, that makes a difference. That's our production. How long does it take? Now, you have another country, uh, labor production. You may have China that may, it's less cost uh, on there, may have more workers, but less. So their productivity may be more. Dependence on the factors of labor or production, or you have technology that does it faster. That's why we're being more uh, productive because of uh, in our manufacturing because we're using technology that gives us that edge. Okay, Econ uh, economic stability. You know, we have inflation, unemployment, recession, depression. You're looking at the state. You're looking at the location. You're looking at the countries. I'm not going to go into that, but we've discussed that. I'll open that up like I promise. Okay, but we discussed that in class. I'm trying to keep it. I, when the last time when I looked, it was 41 minutes. I'm trying to keep it underneath an hour. Okay, U.S. government, our national deficit is the amount of money we owe, federal spend, national debt is, uh, and I think it's 18 trillion in 2012, I think it's 2013. It's a little higher now, but I don't want to shock you. Use what the book utilizes. Okay, and then uh, managing the economy. You have two things I want to cover that we cover in chat. Uh, monetary, Federal Reserves, and we'll talk about that. That's the banking, you know, money supply, recession. It tends to uh, decrease. Economy's booming. That's the whole thing. Are you going to raise the interest rates? Uh, and our fiscal policy is what the government does, is spending and taxes, right? So that's what we're at now. Taxation, spending, do you want to do it? And how do I stabilize the government and spending should have less spending, less taxes, not raise the taxes. If you're trying to stimulate the economy, because if you raise the taxes or you spend more, you had to tax people more, like we have in Chicago. So the money I would have, my disposable income, I had to pay a higher share back to the government. So it's increasing my tax rate. If increased my tax, I have less money to spend to put into the economy. If I can't buy a new TV because I got to pay the government or my student loans, I cannot, in, I cannot stimulate the economy because I'm paying off all uh, uh, that I have less disposable income. Okay? So, in a nutshell, this is our, uh, uh, let me just put this back down in here and do this, expand to level one. And what did we cover as a review? And I'll do this at, I think I went to, to ask a 100. Uh, we covered the uh, concept of business. We talked about the external environment. We talked about economic system. You got socialism. You have uh, communism, and, and you have capitalism. What you've learned we're, uh, going forward is more of a, a mixed economies. You have market economies. That's what we are: capitalistic, free market. Uh, you know, we'll talk about Adam Smith. If you look at uh, socialism and communists, you're talking about uh, Tom Mantis. Uh, you talk uh, uh, privatization. We talked about the main supply. How much will I make? How much will I pay? Equilibrium points where the two meet together. You have perfect competition. We have enough suppliers and customers. Uh, degrees of competition. You're looking at uh, 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 pure competition. You have enough suppliers, and enough customers. Economic indicators: recession, uh, unemployment, consumer price index. Uh, uh, um, uh, Various indicators that will indicate where the economy is going, gross domestic uh, uh, output, uh, you know, gross to, uh, gross national that shows in the uh, 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 
uh, factors of production. It doesn't have to be local, it could be outside. We talked about uh, productivity, we talked about economic stability, we talked about the U.S. government, you know, monetary and fiscal policy, and, uh, you know, and, and I think that should tie in here. Uh, I'll, I'll leave it separate, but it could be tied in with the government, which is managing the U.S. economy. All right, my name is Dr. George Machaki, and this is an overview. Make sure you take the class, do your homework, do the interactive software, and you know, this will give you a general idea in business. You have to understand what's happening in the economy. Do I grow? Do I stop? And if you're doing international, you have to understand the laws and rules of that economic, uh, uh, what's happening in that economy, not only for the government, uh, I mean the country as a whole, but the specific location and industry that you are uh, basically uh, working in. And uh, make sure you understand your consumers, that they do have the disposable income. Uh, to buy your product and that you could be sustainable for at least three or four years, hopefully longer, but let's, uh, let's face it, uh, all these factors affect businesses, but you'll do well. Again, my name is Dr. George Machaki, and I'll see you in our next uh, session. Bye.